this uh, panel tonight is um, very interesting. Um, over the years, we've had, first, we've never had um, any of these three doctors um, at the conference before. And a lot of our panels and lectures for years have focused a lot on obesity, diabetes, heart disease. Um, subject of cancer, we've always uh, felt a little less clear on. So I'm glad to have the opportunity to ask questions and see what everyone has to say about cancer. Um, uh, if each of you could introduce yourself and tell us what your latest book is and what you've been doing the last 20 years so we could get a little more familiar with you, that would be great. If we can, we could go in the order of Dr. Campbell, Dr. Funk, and then Dr. Bard, that would be a good order to go. Sure, sure. so um, I'm at the University of Rochester. I'm an assistant professor. And I've been focusing more recently on research in that role. So um, we have a research nutrition and uh, research center, nutrition and medicine research center. And we've run a small clinical trial, a pilot study looking at um, women with metastatic breast cancer and giving them a very strict whole food plant-based diet for eight weeks, um, just to get some initial um, pilot preliminary type of data. Um, I'm also running a clinical trial on um, type two diabetes, uh, which is not terrifically pertinent to tonight. Um, but clinically I have practiced primary care, but over the past, oh, I don't know, seven years now, I've, I've really been starting and running various, um, what I call lifestyle medicine programs. So helping people change their diet and get healthier through diet and lifestyle changes. And, um, that's mostly been utilizing a plant-based diet, uh, a, a strict whole food plant-based diet. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm, where I'm at now. I'm doing a little research and, and have a small practice online at myplantbasedprogram.com. Thank you. And I am Dr. Christy Funk. I am a surgical breast oncologist, so breast cancer surgeon. I finished my breast cancer fellowship at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles 20 years ago in 2002, and I stayed on at Cedar sinai as one of the directors of their breast center um, at the time was run by five men over 50. So they wanted some estrogen in there. And then my husband and I had the um, bright plans of creating this one-stop shop, like everything under one roof with cherry cloth robes and fresh flowers and making a breast center that was very inviting and marrying state-of-the-art technology and diagnostic techniques with compassionate, more holistic care, bringing in things like nutrition and Chinese medicine, physical therapy, et cetera. So we launched the Pink Lotus Breast Center in 2009, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Although the, the picture of the center has evolved over the last uh, 14 years and devolved because insurance didn't doesn't always just honor the whole, <laughs> the whole aspect of, um, of more preventive and holistic care. And so financially it was challenging, not to mention that we opened doors. I kid you not, if you look at the Dow Jones graph, it is boom, 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 boom March 23rd, 2009. Look it up. The nadir of worldwide financial collapse was the day I opened doors. Um, and I was four months pregnant with triplets. So needless to say, the three surgeons who said they would come with me bailed and I had a $50,000 a month lease uh, for eight years. And that's a totally different story. Um, but uh, interestingly, part of that hardship that I endured led me to explore different things that I never would have otherwise. And one of those things, quite honestly, was writing my book, Breast the Owner's Manual. As I mentioned, I have three sons and they, at the time of writing the book, were six and a half, seven. There were seven most of that time that I was writing. And honestly, I never would have written a book if I didn't need the advance money so badly. I'm not kidding. So it really is the biggest blessing of my life. I, I had ideas for a book. I would do it when the boys were in college and didn't need me so much. Instead, I needed the money. I wrote it now and it has transformed me. So when I dove into the nutritional science, really for the first time, the other doctors on the panel will agree with me. I'm sure we get like Zippo in all of medical school and training on nutrition other than like the Krebs cycle. And I dove into this science blown away that it really existed in these peer-reviewed, reputable journals from New England Journal of Medicine, Lancet, et cetera. It wasn't like in Green Leafy Magazine kooky stuff. It was solid evidence. And I was really just 
beyond convinced by the evidence that a plant-based lifestyle um, and diet is the only way to go, the healthiest diet on the planet. And so I'm probably the newest on the panel to this way of living. It's been five years now straight where if you heard my lecture yesterday, we went totally plant-based in one hour, um, emptied the fridge and that was it. We never looked back. My three sons, my husband, who is a uh, not by profession, but just for fun, but he's a nationally ranked um, full Ironman distance Ironman, and he was totally on board. And um, anyway, I have been transformed by the writing in a way that I can now really empower women with some very actionable um, start right now power that they can embrace, and I can help them transform their lives in that pivotal diagnosis moment where look, if you do everything you've been doing up until this point, that let cancer happen. So we can't emerge out of this experience and journey, reverting back to the same thought patterns, diet patterns, lifestyle habits, because what's then to prevent a recurrence, just this tamoxifen pill you're on or whatnot. So I've been so blessed and empowered by this writing of the book, um, that it's transformed my practice and my home life and my whole vision for my self and my future. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bard? Yes, yeah, so my latest textbook came out in August and it was image guided diagnosis of COVID-19 lung disease because I've been working with telemedicine for um, 30 years and I hooked up with the Europeans with whom I, I do a lot of consulting and co-research. And because there are no patients coming into New York City into a private office imaging practice anywhere, uh, the uh, hospitals in Germany, France, uh, Italy were filled with people and telemedicine ultrasound connections. So I worked with them and we saw a better way to diagnose lung disease. And more importantly, we got into the whole post-COVID uh, imaging of the arteritis, you know, the, the, the stroke, uh, the vasculitis, the, the, the aneurysms, the um, neuropathy, all these things that happen. So, uh, and that, that was, a COVID book, but before that, I think in 2020, the textbook on, let's see, it was called Image Guided Dermatologic Treatment. Yeah, that was the latest one in 2020, because I'm a user of very high resolution ultra scan, uh, ultrasound with high resolution optical imaging, confocal microscopy, um, high field MRI, as indicated. So I've been interested in the skin for many, many years because I saw the dermatologist, number one, thought they could see below the skin and worse uh, because they couldn't see under the skin and because the, the biopsies were not that uh, informative, Take, you know, taking tissue out of people's scalp or skin and not coming to a, a real clear diagnosis bothered me a lot. So I wrote this book, again, with my uh, European and uh, international uh, co-authors. But the book I'd like to talk about was in 2005, because it described my first interaction with medicine and being almost killed by it. As a matter of fact, I would have been killed by it because I, I developed polio as a kid in 1949, and I was sent to a hospital to die. And I was doing not well, but not poorly. And then one day my health declined rapidly. So the doctors figured, look, the, the kid can't breathe well. Uh, he's probably developed pneumonia from lying in bed. And they called my parents up and said, you better come to see him. Well, fortunately, my dad <laughs> was an army physician. Uh, he was a surgeon in, in World War II. And he came back from the Pacific Theater of War with penicillin, which the doctors at this huge polio treatment center had never heard of, didn't believe, and told my father, you couldn't give it to your kid. So my father you know, smiled, agreed with them, 
And then he gave me these little pills. He said, take these white pills with a lot of water when nobody can see you. And a week later, I was 100% better with my breathing. So uh, I've had countless experiences where standard medical, shall we say, paradigms of teaching or thought or algorithms, however you want to call it these days, has, is doing more harm than good. And I think what you're all talking about in plant-based natural treatment is superb. This is the key because it's, it's healthy. And, and Tom, I'd like to say one more thing about diabetes and, and cancer and inflammatory skin disease because I work with uh, treatment technologies. My philosophy is if you can see a, a tumor or see a disease, uh, then if you can image it and look at the biology of the disease, then you can treat it better. My whole work was then and still is to validate new treatment options. So one of the new treatment options we are using with diabetes is uh, pulse electromagnetic field therapy, which is, this, this is came from, it's basically a German uh, concoction that's used all over the world, except in the United States. In the US, they use it on dogs and horses, <laughs> race horses, mostly because it, it helps healing tissue and helps the, uh, the, the horses um, run faster and the dogs from limping. But it also has been used for diabetes treatment because it realigns the uh, molecular imaging of disease and it helps the, the um, body to be, well, be stronger. Now regarding natural best breast, uh, healing. When I was at the John Wayne Cancer Institute in um, many years ago, uh, we were discussing melanoma treatment because I'm, my ultrasound technology finds melanoma better than any other uh, uh, diagnostic or even biopsy device, in my opinion. We were talking about biopsying the breast or biopsying cancer in general. So Christy, let me ask you if this is true. They made a statement then when they biopsy a woman's breast, the biopsy somehow, maybe it leaks uh, cancer cells, but people who get core biopsies have a shorter lifespan and more metastatic disease than people who get the whole area uh, cut out and then diagnosed. Is that something you agree with? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. I'm trying to be as naturalistic as possible to, uh, well, replace biopsies with imaging because this is what I do. And uh, certainly in the dermatologic area, the biopsies have proven very, very fully accurate. For, for the last 25 years, they've been really lousy. Mm -hmm.